study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth at 2 Timothy 2.15 hello everyone in this study today we're going to be looking at a question and the question is is the rapture seen in Matthew 24 where there's two in the field there's one taken there's another one left is this the rapture of the body of Christ now I've done a study on this uh, in another video on my channel but in this video we're gonna get into it more detail this is gonna be a more in-depth look at this situation if we can see the rapture in Matthew 24 this is gonna be more of a meat type of study versus a milk type of study the last video that I did was just a general overview it was the milk of the word it wasn't too deep it was you know a little more uh, just an, a general overview and it you know I tried to keep it real simple but this one's gonna be more detailed okay now the question is is the rapture of Matthew 24 who are the ones being removed in verses 37 through 41 now it's interesting to note believe it or not there are many 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 Christian preachers and teachers out there even in believe it or not even in the grace circles okay the circle of grace my grace brothers and teachers there are some out there that state that they can see the rapture taking place in Matthew 24 when it comes to this situation of one being taken out of the field and another one left okay two will be grinding at the mill one will be removed one will be left there will be two in the bed one will be removed another one left okay I'm sure you heard this analogy that Jesus gives the disciples now there's a few problems with this teaching the first problem is that the mystery of the rapture hadn't been revealed yet it was still a secret at this point and uh, it would be revealed later on with the conversion of Apostle Paul okay and the second problem with this teaching that the rapture can be seen in anywhere in the four Gospels uh, or even in Daniel's prophecies the Old Testament or even in Revelation everything in Matthew 24 can be found in the prophetic program for the nation of Israel all the four Gospels in entirety are all about the kingdom program which falls under the prophetic program which again falls for the nation of Israel okay it's not about the body of Christ it's not the mystery program it has nothing to do with Paul's 13 books of Romans through Philemon now let me show you why in this second example why this is this teaching I believe it is wrong we see in Matthew 24 and in Revelation and in Daniel something very interesting okay first of all in the book of Revelation the, the the book itself of John's revelation is nothing new as far as prophecy it's simply a more detailed vision of what Daniel was shown okay back in Daniel's book his prophecies the book of Revelation is a more detailed expanded view given to John about what Daniel had already seen but he didn't understand it okay the books were closed and they were sealed in the middle of Daniel asking questions I want to know this I want to know that the the angel said Daniel stop seal up the book and somewhere in the future this is going to be explained well if you remember back in Daniel 9 10 11 12 again Daniel was confused he was starting to ask questions uh, concerning the vision that he just seen and then he's told to seal the book and the revelation would be given to someone else in the future yes it was given to John and that's where we get the book of Revelation okay now how do we see Daniel's prophecy or all of his prophecies in the book of Revelation and also in Matthew and Mark okay well let me show you if you look at the book of Revelation itself in chapter 6 we're gonna look at chapter 6 in verse 1 real quick 
and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Okay, this is the beginning of the seals. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now notice how Revelation 6, what we just read, verse 1 and 2, is speaking about the same thing as what we see in Matthew 24. If we look at Matthew 24, verse 4 or 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, now he's talking to the disciples, Take heed that no man deceive you. He's talking about the future, the future seven year period, Daniel 70th week, the tribulation period. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. The first seal, being the Antichrist in Revelation, coming in the name of Christ, is deceiving many. Okay, now, look at Revelation chapter 6, again, verse 3 and 4. And this is the second seal. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse, and this one was red. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Notice again, this is speaking about the very same thing Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24, verse 6 and 7. Then ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Remember, in Revelation, the second seal, peace was taken from the earth. Here in the book of Matthew, Jesus is talking about this second seal. Way before the book of Revelation was given to John, or the vision was given to John, right? And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. That sounds like peace being taken from the earth to me. Now, go over to, back to Revelation 6, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard a third beast come and see. And I beheld in lo a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou, hurt not the oil and the wine. Now that looks like famine to me, right? The judgment of famine and pestilence, okay? Here Jesus mentions the same thing in Matthew 24 in verse 7. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in the diverse places. And what does Jesus say in the very next verse? Matthew 24 verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. This is where the term birth pangs comes from. Birth pangs is not found in the King James Version Bible. But in the King James Version Bible, we see a phrase here in verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We just read the first three seals in Revelation. And we just read in Matthew 24, Jesus reveals the first three seals of Revelation to his disciples. And he calls them the beginning of sorrows. And these are the birth pangs, okay, that's being taught today. So let me ask you a quick quick question. This wasn't part of this study, but I'm gonna I'm put it, I'll just put it out there anyway. Can the birth pangs be happening today? No, they cannot be happening today because the beginning of sorrows, according to God's word, according to the book of Revelation and the first three seals and what Jesus tells the disciples in Matthew 24, the beginning of sorrows, these birth pangs happen in the first three and a half years of the seven year period. And if you notice, if you go on to the fourth seal, then we're at the middle of 
the seven year period and that's when the abomination of desolation takes place that's when the antichrist is revealed and he demands worship as god okay so jesus actually shows the first half of daniel's 70th week to the disciples before the book of revelation was ever written before the vision was ever given to john okay again keep in mind the four gospels are all about the nation of israel paul still hadn't uh received or been converted yet there is no mystery gospel of grace at this point in the four gospels when jesus is talking to the disciples there's no mystery gospel of grace there's no paul there is no body of christ yet this is all prior to the dispensation of grace the mystery of the gospel of grace revealed to paul later on okay yet <clears throat> we can see a picture from daniel to the second uh, coming in full we see the prophetic program we, we see what would have happened if you look at the chart in front of you what i have on display here notice what's missing what's missing is the the apostle paul the gospel of grace what's missing is 2000 years on this on this chart 2000 years i have removed from this chart and what you're seeing is what would have happened if they would have never stoned brother stephen prophet stephen if they never would have killed him and they would have said okay we repent we believe jesus christ is the messiah we know we killed him we're sorry we repent of that and we turn completely to him as our messiah we believe that jesus is the messiah uh, we believe you stephen and if they would have done that at that point then daniel's prophecy would have begun that Dan daniel 70th week the prophecy of the the remaining week would have commenced at that point jesus would have come back and the tribulation period would have started it would have gone through he would have purged the nation of israel by fire and tribulation and trial he would have purged them just like fire purges silver and gold okay that's the purpose of the, that seven year period is to refine the nation of israel and to put them through so many hard times so much problems so many difficulties and trials and even a false christ to deceive them it's just a horrible period so it's like a trial by fire and what happens is on the other end of those seven years what's left are believers because all the unbelievers are going to be killed off or they're going to take the mark of the beast or the angels are going to get rid of them at the second coming okay so what's left is just like the the 99.9999 percent pure gold and silver when the miners go in to the ground and they get all the gold and the silver you'll notice if you ever watched on tv these people up in the, the northwest in alaska when they mine gold they end up with a with a, they end up with gold but it has impurities in it okay so they have to take this pile of what looks like sand the gold sand with that has the impurities in it and they have to put that into a fire into a bowl uh, a, a metal bowl or you know it's really really hot and what it does is it melts the gold and all the impurities float to the top of the gold okay so when they cool it down what's left is is you have on top of the gold you have a black a, a thin black sheet of impurities and they just knock that off when it's cold it comes it comes off the gold all right so what's left is is pure gold well that's why the illustration in god's word of refining them as gold and silver to purify them that's why god gives that example okay now the third problem with this teaching that the rapture can be found in matthew 24 throughout the the four gospels and so on is that the teaching itself is debunked directly by scripture in the book of luke and we're going to be taking a look at that as well in just a little bit now if you keep reading the king james version bible and you get into the gospel of luke 
he records more about what Jesus says in Matthew 24. You see, Luke gives, gives his version of what happens and Matthew gives his version, but Luke's version is a little bit better. He records things that Matthew doesn't. So if you read Matthew, you're going to come to one conclusion, but you have to read the book of Luke to understand what's going on in Matthew 24. All right. And we're going to take a look at that too. Okay. So let's open the King James Version Bible again. Matthew 24 verse 37. Let's take a look at what's going on here by rightly dividing, by asking questions, who, what, where, when, and how, and so on. You know how to rightly divide. You know dispensations and so on. By at this point, I, hopefully you do. Matthew 24, verse 37 through 41. In verse 37, but as in the days of, as of Noah, days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, what does that mean? Look at verse 38. For as in the days that were when before the flood. Okay. Now, the flood itself is a time, is a, a period of tribulation and trials, right? So we can compare the flood to Daniel's 70th week. Okay. God protected Noah and his family during the flood. God is going to protect the small remnant of Israel during Daniel's 70th week. They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Remember, it says, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. God gave Noah 120 years to preach to the world that rain and flood and destruction was coming. God gave Noah until the day that he entered into the ark. Okay, that's what we're hearing here in verse 38. And what were they doing until that day that it started raining? They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. They were just living a normal life, right? Verse 39, and knew not until the flood came. Knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Who's them here? These are the people outside of the boat outside of the ark they were taken away in the flood so shall also the coming of the son of man be it's important now what jesus is saying here is this the order of the second coming of our lord jesus right after the 70th week of daniel will be identically the same exact order as when uh no when it happened at noah's flood right during noah the days of noah's flood it the the way the order happened will be the same as in daniel 70th week the flood came and took them away back in the in, in noah's day the flood came and took the unbelievers away and noah and his family were saved at the second coming god is going to take unbelievers away and leave believers on earth to go into the earthly kingdom okay it's exactly the same way as noah as it is at the second coming so i ask you which group of people were taken away from the earth when the flood came was it believers or unbeliever it was unbelievers the flood removed the unbelievers of noah's day from the earth and they went into judgment and the believers in that day no one his family were left here on earth in the ark to go into the next period or the next dispensation of world history after the flood and how do we know the dispensations changed because when noah came out of the boat god gave him a new set of rules one of the rules was is that noah could now eat flesh before noah uh during adam adam was allowed to eat just herbs and fruit and berries no flesh after adam the next dispensation they were allowed to eat some flesh with their berries okay and then when noah comes around another dispensation it changes and now there it, we move further along god gives laws to moses and so forth well now they're able to eat the herbs the the fruit the vegetables and and the flesh but only some flesh 
Now they can't eat swine and other things. You see, God, he doesn't change. He never changes, right? God is God. He, 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 he wasn't created. He'll never end. He just is. God is. He doesn't change. But his administrations have changed throughout time, dealing with certain people in certain ways, okay? So, to illustrate that, he goes uh, on in verse 40 and verse 41. In verse 40, then, okay, this is the second coming after the 70th week of Daniel. Shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Now the question is, who is the one taken from the field? And who is the one grinding at the mill that is left there? If it's the same order then as it was back in Noah's day, and the flood took all the unsaved away, and Jesus says it's going to be the same order at the second coming, then we can conclude from that, through common sense, through logic, that the ones taken away are not believers. They're not saved. They're not justified. So, then accordingly, they are taken away. They are actually taken by the holy angels, the army, and removed, taken to judgment. Therefore, the ones left on the earth, or in the field, or in the bed, and so on, the one left at the mill, the believers are left on the earth and will go into the next period of God's plan. And they'll be brought to the kingdom, into the earthly kingdom, the, the kingdom on earth that Jesus brings with him that he promises as part of the prophetic program for the nation of Israel. They are promised to inherit the earth, the earthly kingdom. And Jesus brings it with him at the second coming and he gives it to them. So he ushers them into the kingdom and he gets rid of all the unbelievers, okay? The earth is purified, just like gold and silver. The example I gave you earlier, God said he's going to put them through a refiner's fire, right? Purifying them like gold and silver. So at the second coming, God is going to get rid of all the impurities from the earth. And what's left is good. What's left is awesome. So they, they get to go into the earthly kingdom. So we see how Noah and his family was spared, but the world was removed or taken away from the earth in judgment. So it's going to be the same order here at the second coming. Uh, those taken are removed from the earth in judgment. Those left behind are those that are going to be ushered into that earthly kingdom for a thousand years, the thousand year millennial reign of Jesus Christ. So now to really set this in stone, we see another passage. Remember earlier, I told you that Luke talks about something more than Matthew. And it's important you see this as well. In Luke chapter 17, in verse 26, this is a, a parallel passage where Jesus is speaking about the very same thing. The nature and order of events at the second coming. Daniel 70th week, second coming. In verse 26, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed at the second coming, right? In that day, in what day? At the second coming. He which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken and the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and guess what? One shall be left. Now notice this, in the same, this is the same teaching that is in Matthew right 
But now, here Luke records something more than Matthew. They ask the Lord a question. They want to know where the ones who are taken, where they're going. They already know what's going to happen to those that are left because, you see, these people are Jews. The, this is the little flock, right? Peter and the apostles, the disciples, they understand prophecy. They, they, they were in synagogues ever since they, could, they learned how to walk, right? They've been hearing about the Old Testament prophecies their whole lives. They know God promises them an earthly kingdom. They know their inherit inheritance is the earth. They already know that. So they know who, uh, what's going to happen to the one staying. But the mystery to them is where is this person that's being removed? Where are they going? Right? They already understand who's staying. So they ask in verse 37. And they answered and said unto him, said unto Jesus, where, Lord? They're asking him, where are they going? These people that are being removed. And Jesus said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Right? Eagles are vultures. They eat dead flesh. If you look back at a prophecy, actually, there's many prophecies concerning eagles and vultures and fowl of the air and prey and so forth. <clears throat> but if you look at Ezekiel in particular, we see another place where God uses this, the vultures, the same example to eat the flesh of the enemies. That's important. So we go to Ezekiel 39, verse 4. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee, I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be de Devoured, thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. So there's an example of the eagles, the vultures, devouring the enemy, the flesh that's left behind. Again, the same prophet in Ezekiel 39, verse 17, And thou, son of man, thou, saith the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl, and to every beast of the field, Assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink blood till ye be drunken and of my sacrifice which I have sacrificed for you thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots with mighty men and with all men of war saith the Lord God so here in Ezekiel 39 we're reading about a war that happens early on during Daniel's 70th week and God uses vultures and the beasts of the field he uses the animals and the birds to consume dead people to consume his enemies right and god is going to use the same method again at the end of daniel's 70th week to get rid of all the goat the unbelievers the lost those that are removed from the earth by the angels are going to be brought to a certain place on the earth. You can call it a dump if you want. And all the birds of the air and all the animals are going to come and, and feast on these people. It's not a pretty picture. And this is known as the Great Supper of God. It is also known as the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. And I'm going to make a video again on that subject the marriage supper of the lamb uh, I already have a video on my channel concerning this what it's about and what it's not there is a tradition being taught out there that the body of Christ will take part in the marriage supper of the lamb well I tell you that is not indeed what the Bible teaches we just read what the marriage supper of the lamb is it is when the fowl of the air the vultures 
the prey, the animals will devour all these unbelievers, all the flesh is called the Great Supper. It is the marriage supper of the Lamb. It is the second coming. Okay, anyway, that's another video. And uh, you can also find that on my channel. I think it's called What is the Marriage Supper of the Lamb? Or Who Takes Part in It? Something like that. So what Jesus is saying is this here in, in this, what we just read. You want to know where they're going? They're being taken to the realm of death. That's where the ones being removed are taken to to death and he tells them where you see the eagles and the vultures flying over the air there those people will be right and their dead bodies will be moved again to a, a different place on earth and the birds will consume them so we can see here that the order of things that happen immediately after the second coming after Daniel's 70th week the seven-year tribulation period some people call it is the exact opposite in order than the rapture the rapture happens prior to Daniel's 70th week. You see, at the rapture, the believers are the ones taken from the earth. The unbelievers are the ones left on earth. You see, it's the opposite. The ones left on earth are here to deal with the famine, the death, the antichrist, hell on earth. We see the opposite here in the order of the ones removed at the second coming okay and because of the opposite nature of the rapture and the second coming it's proof that they happen at two different times the rapture happens first then Daniel's 70th week the seven years take place and then the opposite of the rapture happens the wicked are removed and believers are left to go into the kingdom to repopulate the earth the millennial reign of Christ, the 1,000 years of Christ Jesus' rule on the earth. So now you might be wondering how people will be removed. Well, that's a great question. We know how we're removed in the rapture. Paul tells us the mystery of the harpazo, and he says, first the dead in Christ, those that have died before us that were believers in Jesus Christ, on, that believe on him, and the gospel of death, burial, resurrection, so forth, will rise to meet their souls in the air with Christ, okay? Then we who are alive will be changed, our bodies will be changed to glorified bodies and will and will meet the Lord and the saints also in the air, right? This all happens in a flash. We're not gonna see our glorified bodies being changed we're, we're you're gonna be sitting here one second and and another second you're gone you're already in heaven it's gonna happen fast so again Jesus Christ clearly identified uh, these creatures who are coming back with him at the second coming returning with him as his army of angels. These are the creatures in white in Revelation 19. Now, Israel's believing remnant will be on the earth, remember, at the second coming, right? And they will watch him come. He's going to come back in the clouds. We know that. And when we think about what Peter and the others, when they were looking at Jesus and he was taken up into the clouds, there were two angels standing there, two men wearing white, and they said, Men of Galilee, what are you looking at? This Jesus who was taken up will return the same in the same manner again one day. Okay? He's gonna come back from the clouds in the second coming. Now, these angels who this army that he brings back will gather Israel's believing remnant and also the unbelievers okay and we're gonna see this we're gonna read about it in Matthew 24 verse 30 to 31 and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels 
with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall do what? Gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end, one end of heaven to the other. Okay? So who is doing the gathering here? His angels, right? Now, since Revelation 19.14 calls them the armies of heaven, these angels will obviously fight Satan's armies on the earth when Jesus Christ returns, okay, at that final battle, right? Which isn't going to be much, by the way. This army of angels that's coming back with Jesus, they have two jobs. First, we already talked about this, they're going to gather the tares. We read this also in, the, in another passage in Matthew or Mark, I can't remember. Uh, it says, first gather ye the tares, right? The unbelievers, the angels, and destroy them they'll bring them where the eagles gather the vultures who feed on death right on the flesh these are the ones removed as in two in the field one taken one left one's taken the tares are taken these are unbelievers they're killed destroyed just like back in Noah's day and uh, they're all gonna be taken away and and they were drowned back in Noah's day but now the angels are gonna remove them take them away and they're going to be destroyed and the vultures are going to clean up after them. Now we read in Revelation 19 verse 11 through 14 and I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. This is Jesus. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Pay attention to the next verse, 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, in that verse... It is assumed to be a reference to the members of the body of Christ, the saints. After all, tradition teaches, and it is tradition, you know, it teaches, everybody believes for some reason that these individuals wearing white, uh, this army coming back on white horses, are us, the Christians, the body of Christ. My friends, that is a tradition being taught. That is not what the Bible teaches. We've just been reading about this army of angels coming back with Jesus Christ. And nowhere in God's word is the body of Christ ever called an army. Not one place. Not one place. So if the Bible says that the army is coming with Jesus Christ at the second coming, and we just read all about this army of angels some of them are going to gather the tares. The other ones are going to gather the wheat. Then how can it be the body of Christ coming back with Jesus? Scripture doesn't say that. But because tradition is being taught, and because so many people will not question their preachers, they'll just believe him for, they'll take him at his word, and they'll go out and they'll repeat what they've heard and been taught. You see, it's a lie being told over and over and over and over again and suddenly is believed as truth. In verses 7 and 9, it leads many to that conclusion. Read Revelation 19 with me. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. Look at what we just read real, a little bit closer with me. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come. This is at the second coming. And his wife hath made herself ready. She, ha she has made herself ready. She's waiting for the Lord, for, the, hu for the, the, the husband, right? She's waiting for him. So, if the body of Christ is with Jesus Christ at the second coming, why would we be waiting for him? We're with him. You see, that doesn't make any sense. But it does make sense when you rightly divide and you understand that what's waiting for him is on the earth already and he's coming for them. 
okay and we're gonna go into that later on in another video about who is the bride of Christ or is there such a thing who is the woman who are the virgins and so forth and so forth we're gonna get into all that as well I've made videos on these things they're all on my channel all the parables and everything I'm talking about right now is on my channel many of you haven't seen them for some reason I don't know why but they are very basic teachings on the parables and so forth so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each one of those videos that I've already made and we're gonna get really detailed with them now now we're gonna start teaching in depth all these things okay this is all that's what 2nd Timothy 2:15 is all about rightly dividing and studying to show ourselves approved unto God right amen so again Revelation 19 7 9 let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife hath made it herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and he saith unto me right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb and he saith unto me these are the true sayings of God now I just told you what the marriage supper of the lamb is it is this feast this great supper of God right the great supper of God it all happens at the second coming this is the marriage supper of the lamb what is being said here in this verse is blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb who is called and gathered up at the second coming first the tares then the wheat the wheat are the holy saints those are the people going into the earthly kingdom these are the ones saying blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb because it happens during that time period while revelation 19:14 is often assumed to be referring to us the body of christ jesus himself provides the correct interpretation regarding who accompanies him at the second coming if you don't believe me listen to what Matthew 25 31 says read I'm gonna put it on the screen for you Matthew 21 uh, 25 31 when the Son of Man shall come in his glory this is at the second coming and all the who holy angels with him hello then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory Matthew 16 27 for the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Not his body of Christ members. Not the bride. Not the saints. Not us. It's not us. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. This is the second coming, okay? Mark 8, 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. <clears throat> excuse me in Luke chapter 9 26 for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and his fathers and of the holy angels the creatures described here in these last passages that accompany Jesus Christ at the second coming are angels not us angels wear white clothing as well okay mark 16 5 and entering into the sepulcher they saw a young man sitting at the right side on the right side clothed in a long white garment and they were frightened it was an angel sitting at the sepulcher when Jesus had been already resurrected right if you remember that story in Acts 1 10 and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up when Jesus went up behold 
Two men stood by them in white apparel, linen, white linen, right? Are and who are they? These are angels, okay? Remember the second coming? An army dressed in white, fine white linen, riding on horses. These are the angels, the army coming with him. And we already know what they're going to do. They're going to pick up the, the elect and the, you know, the tares and the wheat, the elect and the unbelievers. So are we going to believe the words of our Lord Jesus in his word when he says that the army, the angels will accompany him at the second coming? Or are we going to continue believing church tradition? That the body of Christ, the bride, comes with Jesus at the second coming. That is tradition, my friends. I am speaking the truth here, dear saints. I am speaking the truth to you. The body of Christ, the so-called Christians on this planet right now, have been fed so many traditional lies, it's pathetic. And they cannot understand the Bible because of that. They don't rightly divide. They don't understand dispensations. They don't even know the difference between Israel and the body of Christ. And at this point, everybody's so dumbed down, they don't even know the difference between the body of Christ and an army of angels. That's how bad it, it, it's gotten, friends. In closing, <clears throat> in case you haven't been watching the news lately, Russia has just given Syria more missiles than ever before. They just gave them a shipment of missiles a huge enormous amount of missiles a, a huge order of missiles has been delivered to Israel by Russia more than ever ever before also Iran just defied President Trump his order by launching yet another missile which is capable of carrying nuclear weapons a nuclear load and we know where it's going to be shot at, friends. It's going to Israel first. And if they can do it, they're going to try to get us too. There's been another attack on Israel from Egypt. Just yesterday. For the Sinai Peninsula. Four missiles. They shot four missiles at Israel. And they were all knocked down by the Iron Dome. Hallelujah. And this all took place within a 24-hour period. If you know anything about prophecy, you know that Israel is going to be surrounded by her enemies. So if you think about it, Egypt is at the bottom, Iran is at her at the right, and Syria is at the top. She's surrounded by her enemies right now. Things are heating up big time. So we see the signs. We can see the season. And it's extremely important that you're saved now and you don't miss the gathering of the body of Christ when it happens, the harpazo, the rapture. And it's going to happen soon when the Lord is ready. Amen? In our next study, we're going to revisit the ten virgins parable uh, who go forth to meet the bridegroom. Who are they? Who is this bridegroom? And what is this all about? And who is this? Where is it? And when is it going to happen? And in the following studies... Like I said earlier, we're going to be getting into deeper, a, a deeper study in the rest of the parables found in the four Gospels as well as all the other videos. Thanks for watching, folks. Thanks for studying with me, dear saints. I love you all. Have an awesome, awesome week. And don't forget to share the Gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And I'm going to... I'm going to put the salvation message at the end of this video. It lasts seven to eight minutes. If you're not saved, if you're not sure that you're going to be caught up when the rapture happens and you're worried about the, the Daniel 70th week, the tribulation period, if you're worried about that, there's no reason why you have to be worried. There's no reason why you have to stay up at night, you know, thinking about whether if you're not saved, thinking about if you have to repent and confess and all this stuff. I suggest you watch the remaining of the video and I hope if you're not saved that at the end of the video you'll take the time to get saved. Amen. So peace and grace in Christ Jesus be with all of you out there. Lord willing, I will see you on the next video.